Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know to program your own hearing aids without the help of a hearing care professional. Coming up. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm the type of guy that likes to do things myself. In fact, one of the main reasons I love YouTube is that you can pretty much learn how to do anything if you watch enough videos. But with the right hearing aids, the necessary equipment, and a foundational understanding of acoustics, you could actually program a set of hearing aids to help you hear better without the help of a hearing care professional. Now, I should say that there will be many, and I mean many, hearing care professionals who will be upset with me for telling you the stuff that I'm about to tell you inside of this video. Never Nevertheless, America is a free country, so if you want to take a stab at self-programming your own hearing aids, I say go for it. And if you need some extra help, go and seek out the help of a hearing care professional. But before I teach you everything that you need to know about self-programming your hearing aids, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, I really appreciate it because it gets these videos in front of a bigger audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos. And I release multiple new videos every single week. That being said, I really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and get into some of the disclaimers for this video. Disclaimer number one, self-programming hearing aids well can be very difficult. There are literally endless adjustments that you can make inside of today's modern prescription hearing aids. And if you make one mistake in the programming, it can have a detrimental effect on your overall performance. Disclaimer number two, if you have zero understanding of acoustics, then some of the stuff I talk about in this video will make absolutely no sense to you. And you're gonna have to spend some time watching other videos on my channel and I will try to link some more important videos down in the description. Disclaimer number three, if you do not have success self-programming your hearing aids, please seek out the help of a hearing care professional who follows best practices because they will be able to make those hearing aids work better for you. With that out of the way, let's talk about the things that you will need to undertake this endeavor. First, you will need an audiogram, and specifically the portion of the audiogram that displays the X's and the O's on the graph. This is what you will use to create your hearing loss prescription. I do recommend that you actually go in to see a hearing care professional to have a hearing test done. Based on my extensive research, there are no online hearing tests that are accurate enough for you to actually self-program a pair of hearing aids and do it well. And here's a pro tip. Go in to see a hearing care professional who does not give you a free hearing test. I know, I know, you probably don't want to pay for a hearing test, but hear me out on this. If you go to someone who gives you a free hearing test, chances are they're going to make you spend an hour with them so they can pressure sell you on new devices. Second, you will need a pair of hearing aids that are actually capable of amplifying to your full prescription for your hearing loss levels. If you're going to be programming hearing aids that you have purchased from a hearing care professional based on your current level of hearing loss, then they would have already taken this into account. But if you're going to be purchasing hearing aids online, you have to make sure that your hearing loss thresholds fall within in the fitting ranges of the particular device that you're looking at. Just remember, many receiver in canal style hearing aids have different levels of receiver strength from standard to medium to power and even maybe stronger than that. This means that you have to make sure that your hearing loss falls within the capabilities of that particular receiver strength to make sure that it's not too strong and to make sure that it's not too weak. If your level of hearing loss happens to exceed the capabilities of a power receiver, then you're likely going to have to switch into a super power or ultra power receiver that will both require the use of a custom ear mold. And there is no good way to purchase a custom ear mold online. You're going to have to go to a hearing care professional to have that done. You also have to make sure that those receiver wire lengths are the appropriate length for you. So if you end up getting a wire that's too long, that hearing aid will hover above your ear. If you get a wire that's too short, it will pull that hearing aid forward and it will mess up the orientation of the microphones. Third, if you can use either a standard, medium, or power receiver on your hearing aids, you're going to want to make sure that you select the appropriate rubber dome to use along with it. Dome selection is a rather complicated subject in and of itself, so I will have an additional video down in the description that you can check out if you feel like you need more help with this. In general, there are tulip domes, open domes, vented domes, and power domes. Each one of them will come in different diameters to make sure that you get good retention of those domes inside of your ears, and they all have different acoustic properties, so it's important to select the right one. Tulip domes and open domes are typically good for individuals who have normal low frequency hearing with a mild to moderate high frequency hearing loss. Vented domes are typically good for individuals who have a mild level low frequency hearing loss and up to a moderately severe high frequency hearing loss. 
Power domes are generally reserved for individuals who have a moderate level low frequency loss all the way up to a severe low frequency loss and up to a severe high frequency hearing loss. But keep in mind, if you are a power receiver user, it is still a much better idea to get a custom ear mold. Fourth, once you have your audiogram and you have your hearing aids with the appropriate receivers and domes or custom ear molds, then you are ready to actually program your devices. Most modern hearing aids have the ability to be connected wirelessly to the programming software if you have a NOAA Link wireless programmer that will work for a variety of different hearing aid brands. If your hearing aids are not wireless, then you're going to have to invest in a Hypro wired interface and the programming cables that are proprietary for the brand of hearing aids that you use. To obtain this equipment, you are likely going to have to go onto eBay because this equipment is only sold new to hearing care professionals. Based on what I've seen, you will likely have to spend between $150 to $250 for a NOAA Link wireless and between $150 to $500 for a high pro or high pro 2 wired programmer. Proprietary programming cables are a toss up and availability just depends on if anyone's selling them at any given time. In terms of hearing aid programming software, you're either going to have to go onto eBay again to purchase either a CD or a flash drive that has a programming software on it, or you're going to have to go onto a third party website that you can download the software from. Pro tip number two, you have to make sure that you actually get the right software for the hearing aids that you have. There are certain versions of software by manufacturers that will not work with all of their brands. So you're really gonna have to spend some time Googling to find out which version of the software you need for your devices. The next two pieces of equipment that I'm gonna be talking about right now are not necessarily required, but they are a really good idea to invest in to make sure that your hearing aids are actually mechanically functioning the right way and to make sure that they are correctly programmed. These two pieces of equipment are called the hearing aid test box and real ear measurement verification equipment. A hearing aid test box is used to identify if your hearing aids are meeting manufacturer specifications, meaning that they're actually capable of amplifying sound the way that they're intended to. A lot of individuals who have issues with their hearing aids is not due to the programming of the hearing aids, it's that those hearing aids are not mechanically functioning correctly. Unfortunately, a lot of used hearing aids that you purchased will not be meeting manufacturer specifications, and there's no way for you to identify this unless you run them through a hearing instrument test box. If you identify that your hearing aids are not meeting manufacturer specifications, they're going to have to go into a hearing care professional so they can send them into the manufacturer to get those hearing aids repaired for you. Test boxes are a little bit more difficult to come by on eBay, but I've seen them ranging anywhere from $500 all the way up to $6,000. Real ear measurement verification equipment is just as, if not even more important than a hearing aid test box because it will be the way that you can actually identify if your hearing aids are programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. If you do not verify the amplification settings of your hearing aids when you're doing the programming, there is no guarantee that those hearing aids are going to be programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription, meaning that your performance is going to decline even if you have really expensive hearing aids. This realer measurement equipment can be found on eBay ranging anywhere from around $2,000 up to $7,000. While this type of equipment is expensive, I think it's totally worth it considering it's the only way to make sure that your hearing aids are mechanically functioning the right way and that they're programmed properly. The last thing that you will need to do before you start programming is to make sure that your hearing aids are fitting your ears properly. Proper physical fit and orientation of your hearing aids is extremely important when it comes to programming your hearing aids. Final determination of a proper physical fit will depend on a feedback measurement inside of the manufacturer programming software. All right, now that you have the initial physical fit of your hearing aids, let's go ahead and get your hearing aids paired up with the programming software. Just keep in mind that a lot of the programming software that's out there is all different. So the things that I'm gonna be telling you about right now is very general. It's not gonna be specific to one manufacturer. When you open up the programming software for the first time and you actually connect your hearing aids, whether it be wirelessly or wired to that software, you're going to have to find a place to enter in your audiogram results. Once you have these results entered into the software, where you're gonna to have to tell the software which prescription you want to actually use. The most common and the most verifiable prescription that's out there right now is the NAL NL2, and that is a non-linear prescription and most appropriate for most adults. Of course, determining the most appropriate prescription for you depends on a lot of different factors that I don't have time to get into in this video. Just make sure that you select one of them. Once you get all of this stuff set up, you're going to want to do a feedback verification test inside of the software while you're wearing the hearing aid. 
sides. This will tell you if the ear mold vent or the style of rubber dome that you are using are acoustically acceptable. You're going to be hearing a variety of different beeps or even static noise inside of the hearing aids, and it's going to measure how much of that sound leaks outside of your ears and recycles back through the microphone. If there is too much leakage of sound from your ears during this test, it can either restrict the amplification from the hearing aids or cause your hearing aids to whistle. This means that you will have to reduce the size of your vent or change the size or style of your dome to prevent the leakage. Of course, if you end up trapping in too much sound, then you could end up experiencing the occlusion effect where your voice sounds really boomy and loud to yourself. Generally speaking, you wanna find the perfect fit that allows you to prevent feedback, prevent occlusion effect, as well as be able to amplify the hearing aids up to your full prescription for your hearing loss levels. To make sure that you can do all three, this is really where real ear measurement comes into play because this will allow you to measure inside of your ear canals if the hearing aids are amplifying sound appropriately to meet your prescription. Again, you can self-program hearing aids without using real ear measurement verification equipment, but there is no guarantee that you're actually going to get significant amount of benefit from your devices if you do not use it. Now, real ear measurement can be a very complex thing to understand. So I do have several videos talking about realer measurement and how I actually perform realer measurement in the clinic that you can find down in the description. If you do not have this equipment, it is basically going to be trial and error. You're gonna be adjusting different frequency bands inside of the programming software. Just keep in mind that the high frequencies typically give you more clarity to speech. Low frequencies give you more volume to speech. Each manufacturer's software will give you a first fit estimate of what it thinks that you need based on the hearing loss that you entered into the software. You also need to ensure that your compression settings are set up appropriately to make sure that you're not over amplifying loud sounds and that you're not under amplifying soft sounds. Just an FYI, your perception of sound will change over the course of the next 30 to 45 days from when you start wearing your hearing aids. So the amount of amplification that you need now will probably be lower than the amount of amplification that you need in four to six weeks. From a safety perspective, I should also talk about the MPO, which is your maximum power output of your hearing aids. You wanna make sure that the MPO settings are high enough to make sure that you can understand speech in a background noise situation, but you don't want it so high that you run a risk of damaging your hearing. In general, you're going to want to keep the MPO settings below 132 decibels, otherwise you are running the risk of damaging your ears even more. If you are verifying the programming of your hearing aids using real ear measurement, then you are going to want to keep the MPO sweep of pure tones below your uncomfortable listening levels that you can obtain from your audiogram. Now when you're doing all of this programming, keep in mind that you want to try to stay away from the upward spread of masking. This is basically an acoustic phenomenon phenomenon that occurs when you over amplify low frequency sounds and they drown out the clarity that you should be getting from high frequency sounds. And yes, I do have a video talking about this phenomenon in detail in the description as well. Once you get these initial amplification settings set up appropriately for your main program inside of your hearing aids, you may want to consider adding additional programs for things like being in the car, watching TV, or going into a restaurant. After you create all of these custom programs, you're going to want to go into each one of them and adjust the digital features and this can include the directionality, the noise reduction, the impulse noise reduction, the expansion settings, the compression speeds, and even the feedback reduction. These settings are critical to make each one of these programs function even better when you go into these particular environments. Just be careful not to overdo all of the digital features because that can actually reduce your performance with the hearing aids as well. You can also use the hearing aid software to adjust how the push buttons work on your hearing aids and to set up how the Bluetooth functions with your hearing aids and you can even get an idea of what the different beep indicators are for different things that are happening with your hearing aids like low battery warnings and phone calls coming in. Some hearing aid softwares also have dedicated programs for streaming audio into your hearing aids. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're streaming audio, let's say phone calls or music from your smart device into your hearing aids, 100% of the audio comes from your phone or from your tablet or from your computer. It does not mix with any live speech or live music that could be coming into your ear canals naturally. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enough low, mid, and high frequency amplification coming in from those streaming sources. Courses. Once you get all of the settings set up initially the way that you want them, you're going to want to save the programming session and keep in mind that these settings will stay exactly the same inside of your hearing aids until you go back into your programming software and adjust them again in the future. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you some foundational understanding of how to actually go in and program
program your own set of hearing aids. And trust me, I get it. It is a complicated subject and I probably could have broken this video up into 50 different videos about self-programming your hearing aids, which gives me an idea that maybe I should actually do that. If you feel like this is too complicated for you, please make sure that you seek out the help of a hearing care professional because that is exactly what you pay them to do for you. If you are going to seek out the help of a hearing care professional, then I highly recommend that you find a hearing up provider near you. Hearing up providers, formerly known as best practice pros, are a network of hearing care professionals who have been personally vetted by me and are committed to following best practices when selecting, fitting, and programming your hearing aids, as well as providing you with best practice follow-up care. If this is the first time that you're hearing about best practices, then I highly recommend that you check out my video that I will link down in the description, because best practices are the only way to ensure that you receive the maximum amount of benefit from your hearing aids. Unfortunately, less than 30% of hearing care professionals actually follow best practices, which makes it extremely difficult to find one of these hearing care professionals. To find a hearing up provider in your area, all you have to do is go to hearingup.com and click on the find a provider tab. There you will be able to search the map for the closest hearing up provider near you. Once you do, give them a call or shoot them an email to schedule an appointment to get your hearing aids reprogrammed. At the end of the day, if self-programming your hearing aids helps you hear significantly better, then I say go for it. And if you happen to run into issues with doing the programming or the programming is too complicated for you, make sure that you seek out the help of a hearing care professional to make sure that you hear your absolute best. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.